Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I believe this will be the end of the wall series. I think this is the wall number, part number seven. Somebody had asked me about Ezekiel chapter eight. So let's take a look. Now, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah are companion books. Uh, they're full of prophecy, but also they're books of rebuke of why the Lord brought destruction upon Jerusalem. So, let's take a look. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the sixth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord fell, fell there upon me. Now, remember, Ezekiel was a prophet of God. So the elders of Judah came and sat before him. Verse 2. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire and from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an, hand, of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. Now, when it's talking about an image, that's where the, uh, in the Greek word, icon comes from. But basically, it's talking about an idol. And of course, the creator of all things gets jealous when you worship one of his creations more than the creator. Of course, it's not his creation, but it's something that he made. I mean, if you make, you know, if, if the Lord makes a rock and you carve the rock into something and call it your God, well, then you're worshiping the creation more than the creator. And he's not too happy about that, right? Verse 4, And behold, the glory of the, of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Now, what's an abomination? It's something that God really, 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 really hates. I mean, it's not just sin. It's extra special sin. Uh, among those things that are called abominations is uh, sodomy and witchcraft. So, and he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. You know, it's interesting, there are a number of sayings that are in the Bible. A hole in the wall, being one. The skin of the teeth, that's another, that's in the Bible. A little birdie told me, that's also in the Bible. Bet you didn't know that. Uh, save your skin. That's also in the Bible, the book of Jew, uh, Job. You know, there's some very interesting... Our language used to be quite Bible-centric, but uh, not anymore. So, there's a hole in the wall. Now, this, I believe, is in the temple. Here it is. God had a temple built in his honor by Solomon. And what are they doing? Why did why did the uh, 
Why did the Lord tell him, you know, look at, you know, there's a hole in the wall. Verse 8. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. Now, didn't Jesus say he was the door? Yes, he did. Jesus said, uh, well, we could take a look. All right, in the book of John, chapter 10, verses 7 and verse 9, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Uh, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. In Revelation 3.20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Verse four one. After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So, but this is not that door. Ezekiel 8.8 8. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So, here it is, God's holy temple that they had built and dedicated to him, but yet they were doing other things that were extremely displeasing to him. All right, so... And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, and abominable, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel, portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. Now people, this is the Sanhedrin, I my, I believe it's the Sanhedrin. The, um, I guess you could call them the Supreme Court. Uh, according to legend, Moses created the first Sanhedrin. He took a group of people and, you know, they were to be the judges and ruler, well, the religious rulers. All right. So these were supposed to be the the whole the the best of the best in Israel and there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel and in the midst of them stood Jezaniah the son of Saphan with every man his censer in his hand and a thick cloud of incense went up so evidently these people are like the temple priests because they were the ones that had the the incense Verse 12, Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. In other words, Oh, the Lord, he can't see us here. That's the Bob translation. The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. See, that's why he dug in the wall and then he went in through a door that was not the door of the Lord. So basically they're saying, oh, the Lord can't see us and the Lord's forsaken the earth. Well, of course he's forsaken the earth because you guys are doing things that he really hates. Verse 13, Then said he unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate 
of the Lord's house, the temple, right, of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Now, Tammuz was just uh, a name of one uh, the son of, depending upon what legend, either the queen of heaven or uh, the queen, an earthly queen. She goes by many different names. Semiramis, Ishtar, Easter. You didn't know Easter was the name of a goddess or a queen? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a name. It's not just a holiday. It's, you know. Uh, the Jews often called her Lilith. Of course, there's a lot of legends about Lilith. Uh, what was some of the other ones? Well, you get the idea, right? Tammuz was her son. And some of the devil's people will try to make a connection between Christ and Tammuz. I don't think so. Supposedly, he was killed by a pig. And then he ascended up to heaven to be with his father, Baal or Baal, depending upon how you pronounce it. Uh, and that's supposed to represent the resurrection of Christ. So think about it. That's what Easter represents. Uh, bunny rabbits, Easter eggs, ham dinner. That's why they ate ham on that day. Because supposedly he was out hunting for wild boars and a wild boar killed him. Uh, you know, let me tell you a little story. About 20 or so years ago, there was a tornado on Easter morning during a church service. I believe it was in Joplin, Missouri. It was in Missouri, but I just don't remember which. I think it was Joplin. Tornado on Easter Sunday morning. It hit a church, killed some people, destroyed at least part of the church. And people were asking, why did God let this happen? Now, I don't remember what denomination of church it was. I believe it was the United Methodist Church, but I could be wrong. But uh, if it wasn't the UMC, it was one of those churches that would uh, do gay and sodom lesbian marriages, sodomite marriages, and lesbians, would have lesbian pastors, women pastors, okay? Uh, women are great for teaching Sunday school. I totally believe that. But uh, they were ordaining lesbian pastors, okay, which is two strikes. Then they were using a false Bible versions. And then they were doing Easter, which is a satanic holiday, which they've been trying to Christianize, but you can't Christianize a satanic holiday. So why did God let a, a, a tornado wipe out this church on the satanic holiday? Uh, well, the people were asking, why did God let this happen? Well, you don't know? You know, it just exposes their total ignorance. A lesbian, probably, possibly a lesbian pastor, a female pastor, a woman pastor, for one thing, is unbiblical, false Bible versions, part of a denomination that does sodomite marriage, and then they're, they're supposedly worshiping the God of the Bible on Easter? You know, these churches that do this Easter stuff with bunny rabbits and Easter egg hunts, I mean, you know, let's face it. When you come to the Lord, you got to come His way, His terms, His conditions. You don't uh, take Satanism, repackage it, and then claim that you're honoring Christ. I mean, it's just... It just doesn't work, people, you know? And they couldn't figure out why God allowed a tornado to rip up the church and kill some of the people on Easter Sunday morning. Oh, well, we were, we were honoring 
We are honoring Jesus. Well, I don't think so. Where in the Bible does it say uh, Easter, uh, worship on Easter, and eat a ham dinner? I mean, but Tammuz was the son of Easter, the the goddess. I mean, look it up if you want to. It's T-A-M-M-U-Z. Women were weeping for Tammuz. Why? Because he was killed by the boar. So let's celebrate by having ham dinner on Easter with bunny rabbits and Easter egg hunts. Yeah, that really, that really honors Christ. How about, how about the Lord's Supper? What about that? Or we could take the bread and the wine or, or Passover where Christ was our sacrificial lamb. How about that? No, we got to do Easter egg hunts with bunny rabbits and chocolate eggs. Uh, you know, that's why, that's why God said, come out of Babylon. And by the way, this Tammuz and Easter and all this stuff, Babylon, that's where it came from, not the Bible. And yes, I know Easter is in the King James Bible. There's a reason for that. But they weren't, it wasn't honoring that. It was telling you that that's what Herod did. All right, verse 15. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they worshipped the sun toward the east. Not the sun, the S-O-N. No, the S-U-N. Don't you ever wonder why they have Easter sunrise services where they go and they face the east when the sun rises. They're worshiping the rising of the sun in the sky, not the rising of the resurrection of the Son of God, the Christ. There's a big difference, people. Verse 17, Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Uh, Jesus said he was the branch. I don't know what I've had people tell me what putting the branch to their nose means. I don't know. I've. I've heard different things, but I don't know for sure. Verse 18. Here's the Lord's solution. Therefore, therefore, will I also deal in fury. What is fury? Anger, people. Therefore, will I also deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. And though the cry in mine ears, and though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, Yet will I not hear them. Well, he'll hear them, but he's not going to listen to their cries. Oh, really? When you guys are in trouble and I bring evil upon you for your wickedness, don't cry to me. Go cry to uh, Tammuz. Go cry to the devil. Go cry to the Easter Bunny. Go cry to them. See if they help you. Uh, see if they can help you out. Don't come crying to me. You ever hear that expression? Oh yeah, you go ahead and do that. But when, when something bad happens, don't come crying to me. All right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 1. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like a noise of many waters. And the earth shined with his glory. Now, people, uh, one of the names of the goddess was Shekinah. 
And there's people that will try to tell you that the glory of the Lord in Hebrew is Shekinah. And that is an absolute lie. Uh, they want you to think God the Father is male. The Shekinah, which is they claim is the Holy Spirit, is female. And then they, um, well, I guess you could say they did it. And then they had a son whom they will say, well, that's Jesus. Uh, that's the kind of stuff, you know, the Shekinah, the Holy Spirit, that's the goddess. Don't believe that. When you hear somebody talking about Shekinah, you're talking Kabbalah and uh, from the tribe, if you catch my drift. Uh, tribe fa uh, fables from the tribe. Yeah. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. You know, the, uh, if you go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 13, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Boy, the black Hebrews hate this verse. They say, oh, see, this is proof he's black because he's got hair like wool. No, it doesn't say his hair was like wool. It says his hair, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his hair and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. All right, so. All right, more many waters. Revelation 19, verse 4. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, and uh, praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And sorry, that wife is not uh, the Shekinah. The wife is the church. All right, so let's go to Revelation chapter 14. Uh, I suppose we'll start, I guess, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Say that five times real fast. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 43, verse 3. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city, and the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Chebar, and I fell upon my face. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. Let's talk about the inner court. It's talking about the temple, right? And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of, I, of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, 
nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. In their setting of their threshold by my thresholds, and their post by my posts, and the wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore, I have consumed them in mine anger. Now let, us, uh, now let them put away their whoredom and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, Show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the goings out thereof and the comings in thereof and all the forms thereof and all the ordinances thereof and all the forms thereof and all the laws thereof and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the ordinances thereof and do them. This is the law of the house. Upon the top of the house, the whole limit Thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. And these are the measures of the altar after the cubits. Now, a cubit was uh, approximately from the tip of your fingers to the elbow. It's approximately 18 inches or a half, one half a meter. The cubit is a, cu is a cubit and a hand breadth, even the bottom shall be a cubit, and the breadth a cubit, and the border thereof by the edge thereof round about shall be a span. And this shall be the higher place of the altar. And from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle, shall be two cubits, and the breadth one cubit, from the lesser, uh, lesser settle even to the greater settle shall be four cubits, and the breadth one cubit. So the altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar upward shall be four horns. And the altar shall be four cubits long, twelve broad square in the four squares thereof. And the settle shall be fourteen cubits long and fourteen broad in the four squares thereof. And the border about it shall be half a cubit, and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about. And his stair shall look toward the east. And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith the Lord God, these are the ordinance of the altar in the day when they shall make it to burnt, uh, to offer burnt offerings thereof and to sprinkle the blood thereon. Isn't that what Christ did, shed his blood? And thou shalt give to the priests, the Levites, that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me, a minister unto me, saith the Lord God, a young bullock for a sin offering. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put it on the four horns of it, and on the four corners of the settle, and upon the border round about it. Thus shalt, shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Isn't that what the blood of Christ was due? Cleanse us and purge us from sin? Verse 21. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering, and he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary. And on the second day thou shalt offer a kid of the goats, without blemish for a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with the bullock. And when thou hast made an ends of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And thou shalt offer them before the Lord and the priest shall cast salt upon them. And they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Seven days thou shalt prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forth, the priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, saith the Lord God. All right, let's read Zechariah chapter 2. Now, would you uh, rather believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, or would you rather get bulls and goats and bullocks and lambs and uh, take their blood and sprinkle it on the altar and burnt offerings? Seems like a lot of work, doesn't it? That's why in the book of Hebrews it was 
you know, showing you that the New Testament was so much better than the Old. Let's take a look at Zechariah chapter 2. I lifted up mine eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, Whither goest thou? And he said unto me, The measure Jerusalem to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him, and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. For the multitude of men and cattle therein, for, for I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth. And no, that's not Santa Claus going ho, ho, ho. No. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. People, take a map out. Look at Jerusalem. And what land is north? Europe. Europe is, people. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. See, right now, we dwell with the daughter of Babylon. There is so much stuff in the church that comes out of Babylon and not the Bible. And people don't bother to read the Bible, so they don't even know this stuff. I mean, pfft. verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Another one of those famous Bible sayings, you know, the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto thee. And the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. All right, we're getting ready to close out here. Revelation chapter 21. People, I've read the last uh, the last chapters of the book. We win. Revelation 21, 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem. Not this filth that's over there now, new Jerusalem. That's why there's going to be a new Jerusalem, because the old Jerusalem's polluted people. And I, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving 
and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the, of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the last seven plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall, and had a wall, great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. People, Ma, Bob's note here, there is no thirteenth Gentile, non-Jew, non-Israel gate. Unless you're one of the twelve tribes of Israel, you ain't getting in this place. Uh, that's it. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof, and the wall, the wall thereof. And the city lieth fourscore, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, and hundred and forty and four cubits. Boy, that's a big wall, people. And hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophrasius. Mm, forgive my pronunciation. I, I didn't take um, geology in college. The eleventh, a jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. That must have been one huge oyster making that pearl, huh? Verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Well, this concludes the final study of the wall. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.